there's nothing worth more than whatever come close. comes free and my shame is undone. And I pray that would be true for you this morning as we worship the one who sets us free, the one who has uh, purchased us away from sin, death, and the devil and has uh, brought us into the kingdom of his beloved son, Jesus Christ. So good to welcome you. Good to be in worship with you this morning. And want to just raise a couple announcements with you this morning. The first, of course, is Operation Christmas Child continues up here at the front. And next Sunday will be our final Sunday for that, and uh, we're going to watch a quick, I'm going out of order, Lee, I'm sorry. We're going to watch a quick video of that, and then I'm going to have, and then I will wrap up our Stewardship Sunday. I don't see Paul here. So, um, so let's watch the video, and then we will talk about our Stewardship Campaign. This year has been a pandemic year. Children are hurting all over the world. People are afraid. Families are scared. 
People have lost their jobs. They don't know where to go, what to do. They don't know what hope they have for the future. Well, I want every child to know that God loves them, that God has not forgotten them, and that he cares for them very much. And when you pack a shoebox and send it to Operation Christmas Child, it gives us an opportunity to give that box to a child and do it in Jesus' name. Can you just imagine the hope and the thrill and the joy of when a kid opens up a lid like this and all these toys are in it? It's an incredible gift. <laughs> and so I just want to say thank you. We need your help this year more than we've ever needed it because of the pandemic. It's just going to create a lot more opportunity. Thank you and God bless you. And remember, pray for the children of the world. Amen. So out of the entryway, the well-lit entryway, by the way, thank you, Lee, yeah. Heidi, and team, finishing up that, um, are the boxes and some instructions on, on how to fill them. And you got one week left. Next Sunday, we'll have them all up here. We'll be praying over them, and then we'll be taking them on to the distribution uh, center here in uh, the north uh, northwest, inland northwest. I'll get it right yet. Uh, so next Sunday, you still have one more week. You can fill a box or two or more uh, and do that. You can still buy raffle tickets for that help uh, defray the cost of sending the boxes. So uh, do that as well. We'll have the drawing next Sunday and celebrate that all together, won't we, Joanne? So it'll be a good... Any other? I'd like everybody that has a fly rent shirt to wear them to get up front to get the picture taken so I can attach it to our fly rent. Oh, there you go. The photo op time next Sunday, too. If you have your thrive rent shirt, the Live Generously t-shirts, no matter what year, right? No matter what color. Yeah. Wear, wear those next Sunday and come, come up with a picture and then we'll get those sent out. Some good stuff. So our, today is our stewardship uh, campaign kind of wrap-up time. If you're a, a member here at, at Peace Lutheran Church, we've been having the campaign that's just kicking off. This, this theme of, of Gather, Grow, and Send is going to be kind of a theme for our entire year together in ministry and, and mission and worship and things like that. And so today is a time where you can bring your uh, pledge cards or your time and talent sheets and you can place them in this, in this basket right here. We had a few end up in the baptism font, but, um, <laughs> which is fine. That's a way, one way to bless your pledge or your commitment. Uh, beforehand, but you can bring those up during communion this morning or at any time during worship. You can place those in the basket. If you didn't yet get to fill one out and want to, there are some blank forms up here, but I don't think the time and talent sheets are up here, so we can we can get some more of those at some point for you as well. But um, again, an opportunity as we look forward to this year of, of reminding ourselves that you know three three main reasons we uh, are the church is to gather together to worship, to study His Word, to grow up in our faith, right, to mature and to be able to build each other up for the sake of the world around us because then once we've gathered once we're growing and maturing then we're sent out into the world by jesus to uh, proclaim the good news and we get to do that get to share the good news with other people so as we as we emphasize this these three pieces of, of uh, ministry and, and what it means to be part of this congregation we just want to continue to lift those things up in prayer one of the ways that that happens then is through your generous gift of your time your prayers and any any contributions you wish to make uh, that helps support that uh, ministry. So I'm just going to pray over this uh, part of our ministry before we continue. So Father God, thank you for uh, creating Peace Lutheran Church. Thank you for gathering us together in the name of your son Jesus. And thank you for the opportunity to gather together to know you better and to be reminded that we are loved, that we belong, that we're becoming more and more like Jesus every day as we walk with you and that we're sent out into the world to be a blessing to others. Remind us, Lord, that we, we get to grow up, we get to mature, we get to get further down the path of life with you in this life. And so we pray for your Holy Spirit to just stir up in us and, and uh, a desire to grow and to, to um, mature in uh, our trust in you and in our uh, ability to share you with others. And then again, Father, to be blessed as you send us uh, with uh, the word in our hearts and with your Holy Spirit taking up residence in us that we can be a blessing we can be light and hope and love and truth uh, to the world around us. So we pray this morning over these contributions, over these pledges, over this commitment of time and talents and treasure. And we thank you again for the opportunity to walk in this life with you. In the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And finally, this morning uh, for our announcements, uh, one, one quick one. Next Sunday, we'll be celebrating Veterans Day. And so we just encourage you, you or someone you know, uh, you can invite them to come. We'll be recognizing uh, the veterans of our, our services, and so next Sunday we'll be doing that with a little special music at the beginning, and then uh, also just praying over all those uh, men and women who serve our, and have served in our, our armed forces. Finally, the persecuted church this morning, we remember Uganda again this morning, and uh, this could come in this week. Um, a Voice of the Martyrs supported Christian woman 
died earlier this month from complications due to poisoning. Anna came to Christ from a Muslim background, and her family did not accept her choice. She fled to a pastor's home in early August, but by then she was already ill and rapidly losing weight. After several days, she was struggling to walk and in great pain. Her family knew she was ill, and her father sent a message to her saying she would not survive. After a month in the hospital, she succumbed to the illness and passed away. Doctors found damage to her, her internal organs from poisoning, which her family likely administered to, administered to her while she still lived at home. Anna is survived by two children, ages 12 and 6, who are being cared for by the pastor in the church. It is a very sad moment for us losing Anna, the pastor said. It is very sad for the children as well. Thank you for coming to Anna's aid. She died gratefully. God brought you to show her the real love of Jesus. Please continue to pray for her children. So, Father, we do thank you that you are a father to the fatherless, that you are faithful. Uh, Lord God, that you are the one who walked with us through the darkest valleys, that you are the God we can turn to as our refuge and strength, abundantly available to help. And we, we pray that um, your presence and your, your faithfulness would be known to Anna's children as, the, as this church comes alongside her family, Lord, now. And, and we pray for their protection, their provision, but... And we also pray, Lord, for her family, Lord, that had rejected her, and, and pray, too, that you would continue to work and weave together um, in the way that only you can, Lord, to bring good out of uh, terrible situations. And we thank you for the ministry, the continuing ministry of Voice of the Martyrs, and the many men and women who daily risk their lives for the sake of Jesus. And so, Father, help us to be encouraged this day to have that kind of bold witness in this world, in this country, in our communities. As we remember and pray for Anna and her family today, and it's in your name we trust. Amen. Amen. Please stand with me as we remind one another once again from the words of Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, Therefore take up the full armor of God, so that you will be able to resist in the evil day, and having done everything, to stand firm. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, Stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions. With all kinds of prayers and requests, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Amen.
Father God, we do thank you for this truth that uh, your son who is the way, truth, and the life does live in us by the power of your Holy Spirit. So may, may we be remembering that truth this week, the truth of Jesus in us, the truth of Jesus to do all the things that he promises, Lord, in addition to forgiving our sins and, and bringing us life everlasting, Lord, that he does give us power over fear, that he does give us the power to overcome the challenges and the difficulties uh, in our relationships and in our families and our workplaces, that we really do have his power in us to uh, face the things of this world and be reminded, Lord God, that it is a battle you fight. It is a battle that you are well-equipped and resourced to win uh, on behalf of your people. And so we trust in you this day and remember the gift of your son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. comes from Acts chapter 19, <clears throat> verses 1 through 10. Now it happened that while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through, through the upper country and came to Ephesus and found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, On the contrary, we have not even heard there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into what then were you baptized? And they said, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance telling the people to believe in him who was coming after him, that is, in Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking with tongues and prophesying. There were about twelve men in all. And he entered the synagogue and continued speaking out boldly for three months, having discussions and persuading them about the kingdom of God. But when some were becoming hardened and disobedient, speaking evil of the way before the people, he withdrew from them and took the disciples away with him and had discussions daily in the school of Tyrannus. This took place for two years so that all who lived in Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. The second lesson is from 1 Peter chapter 5. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you at the proper time, having cast all your anxiety on him because he cares about you. Be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. So resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brothers and sisters who are in the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Here ends the reading. And at this time, I'm over here. We have a few kids if they'll come. Come on up before you head to kids' church. You guys want to just kind of hang out right Oh my goodness, what do you got here? <laughs> <laughs> that is wonderful. Thank you, Gwen. Wow. Thank you very much. So I've got some visual aids this morning. Right? We're going to be talking about the sword of the spirit. All right? So, well, first of all, start out with that. Right? What do we got here? A pocket knife. It's helpful, right? It can, it can help, you know, with, you can whittle wood with it and... Maybe clean fish and maybe a few other things with it, but it's a nice kind of a little pocket sword, right? All right, then we have another sword. Oh, my. Right? That little dagger. That's... Oh, my. Look at that. I know, right? <laughs> Holy smokes. Yeah. Right? This is kind of like a glorified letter opener, but it's, yeah. Yeah, a, little, it's a little dagger. Man. It's, it's kind of sharp, and, right? We, we hold that. Oh, my. Keep it. Keep it. <laughs> and then we have kind of a little replica of what a Roman sword might have looked like by a common thing that a Roman shul shul soldier might have used, right? And this one's really sharp, so be very, very careful. All right. So, so far, if you had your choice between the three swords, 
that uh, you've seen so far, which which one would you like? Yeah. Which one would you prefer to have? Of uh, these three. Oh. This one here? Yeah, it's just your size, isn't it, Glenn? <laughs> that kind of matters sometimes, right? How, how much we're ready to, to operate in, how much. So we'll get a, a little bigger one yet. Right, you want with that one? Okay, there's no sheet on this one. Be very careful. Yeah. And Glenn, I saw, oh here, Glenn, you can hold this one. That's probably better than holding one. Okay, <laughs> then we have, Whoa. wow, a cutlass, I think is what that's called, right? Anybody know their yeah. swords? I don't know. Right, it's got the little fancy handle on there. That's pretty fun, pretty sharp. And then finally, We've got kind of a bigger sword, broad sword. Oh my goodness. Right? Keep those questions. Pretty cool. So now, which one would you prefer to have? If you were about to go on a, a giant battle, which one would you which one would you want to have with you? Sam? This one, because it's more versatile than that. Okay, yeah, it depends, right? Depends on the battle, which sword you might want to. I can put that in there. There you go. Well, I'm going to show you one more sword, actually, that's more powerful than all those swords. You know what it is, right? Yeah. Word of God. The Word of God, right? And this is a sword that you have and can use every day. And Jesus tells us in his word that the way we use this sword is by speaking his truth, by speaking his word to other people. As simple as, Jesus loves you. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for you. That you are a blessing. Simple truths that we can start speaking. And God says, with that, the Spirit goes to work with the sword to get rid of all the stuff around us that might harm us or bring harm to others. So even though these swords are great maybe for earthly kinds of battles and things, we're remembering that that's not really the battle we have as Christians, is it? That's against lies, and it's against people who would think less of us, or against uh, the accusations of the enemy. Maybe even the lies we tell ourselves sometimes, right? So I pray today, and you'll head to Children's Church and to, to a kid zone, you're going to learn a little bit more about that, but that you remember you have one of these swords at home. I bet at least one in your home, and that when we learn to use it, we see amazing things that God does on our behalf, okay? So Father, thank you for your word, which really is the most powerful weapon of all that you can give us against all the schemes of the enemy. And you tell us in your word, we're to be alert and be aware of the battle raging, Lord, but that is not what we think, and that um, as we trust in your word, Lord God, that your spirit wields the sword mightily on our behalf, and so help us trust you uh, again today for all that you've given us, all the truth, all the promise, all the righteousness that we find in your scriptures. And we pray this in your mighty name. Amen. 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 All right. I shall retrieve the weapons thing. Thank you again for your hard work as well. You guys can go to And please stand with me as we wield the, the sword of the Spirit by singing Scripture as well. Let's sing our next song, Disciples.
It reminds me in John chapter 1 where, where John kind of echoes those very same words from the Hebrew. He says, in the beginning, right? He echoes that words from Genesis, in the beginning when God created. Right? And then he goes on to tell us that, that Jesus was there at the beginning, that nothing's been created, that Jesus wasn't a part of. And then he speaks these powerful words. If you have your Bible, John chapter 1, and if you weren't told this is BYOB Sunday, <laughs> bring your own Bible. Bring your own Bible. What do you think? Right? Your own Bible. The sword, your own sword. You can bring that every Sunday. Encourage that. In verse 3, all, all things came into being through him, through Jesus, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light for all people. There it is again, right? Echoing that, that remind, reminding us, right, of those words from the very beginning when everything was in turmoil and darkness, and then light shows up. Jesus, right? And I don't know about you, but I need that again. Right? I leak a lot. I, I, I forget a lot. I, I need to be reminded. We talked a lot about this. But today we have this, this image, right, of, of, of God coming and, and giving us the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, right? I know, I picked the big one just because there's a story. Because you can. Um, I was given this by a really good friend at a, at a time in my life where I had really forgotten a lot about who God was, about His Word, about His truth, about who He is, and about my own life. I was going through a lot of different term, turmoils that I, I won't uh, drag you into at the moment. I'll, I can tell you personally at some point. Uh, but he brought this to the office one day at the church where we were at, and he just handed it to me. He said, John, I felt like the Spirit wanted you to have this, so I got it for you. And I'm thinking, well, that's a cool sword, you know. <laughs> and then he starts telling me, of course, reminding me, which is what a, a great part of the gospel is, is reminding one another about the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, right? And it became a symbol in my office, and still is, to remind me, and hopefully an opportunity to remind others, about just how <laughs> powerful God's word is for us, and for the sake of so many people we love. So many be people we know that uh, are walking in darkness. So many people we know that are prodigals. So many people we know that are stuck in some kind of bondage to some kind of sin, whether it's drugs, or alcohol, or pornography, or just the, the, the caught in that bondage of depression and, and oppression and, and despair, right? Do you know anybody like that? <laughs> Are you somebody like that? Right, and here's, here's the amazing part, though. We, we have been given the weapons, as Paul says, that, that have come to destroy and defeat those bondages in the lives of, of others and ourselves as well. Every Sunday we come here, right, to hear the word, to worship, to pray, to, to have fellowship, to be reminded at the table, right? Remember Remember me, Jesus, who is, by the way, the Word. When we talk about the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, Luther taught that there's three understandings of the Word. First is the Word is a person. The Word is Jesus. And so whenever we talk about the Word of God, we're talking about a person. And, and so often we think about knowing the Word is about memorizing a bunch of passages of Scripture. Nothing wrong with that. I'd encourage it highly, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But, but first and foremost, it's about knowing the person of Jesus, not just words about Him. You see, we're given the opportunity to know Him, not just know about Him. And the second thing, Luther said the Word is the Word of is, is Jesus proclaimed to others. Right? Because when Paul wrote these words, there was no... New Testament. He wasn't handing out, he wasn't a Gideon handing out Bibles and saying, okay, this is the word of God, treasure it. No, the word of God was, all they had at that time was, was the word proclaimed and people teaching it orally to one another and proclaiming it. And you learn it by speaking it to other people. And the fastest way you could memorize scripture is by sharing it with someone else. And not just to recite it, but to speak into their lives the truth of it. I shared in Sunday school this morning that one of the most powerful passages I get to share with people Regularly is you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are one of God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good work. And I'm amazed at how many people, Christians and non-Christians alike, have never heard that or never known that truth. And it only reminds me how powerful God's word is in bringing to our hearts things that we need to hear at just the right time. Which is why we need to stop being so scared of speaking it to other people. It's the spirit, the sword is, 
Whose? It's the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And what I see in Scripture so often is when we are willing to yield to the Word of God in our own lives, but also speaking, yielding and speaking the Word of God to others, at the same time, what begins to happen is the Spirit begins to wield that sword. It's almost a tandem thing that happens. It's this partnership. It's this, it's this uh, divine cooperation that God has put in motion by the Holy Spirit, right, that lives where? <coughs> in us, which is a great question that Paul asked in Acts 19 today. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you first believed? And it's not a theological question, by the way, right? It's, it's as practical a question as did you put gas in your car this morning? It's so practical because if you did, if you didn't, you'll know pretty soon. <laughs> right? You'll find out at some point if you didn't fill up your tank. It's not a question about, well, you know, I own a car and I know it's smart to put gas in the car, so I'm sure I put gas in the car. Well, you wouldn't make that argument. You'd think, did I, did I put gas? Did I? And it's the same with Paul's question about the Holy Spirit. It's not a, it's not a th philosophical discussion. It's just a practical thing. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And if you did, wonderful. Operate in that and understand how spirit works through the proclamation of your word. If not, let's take care of that too and, and be filled. And he, he lays hands. They're filled with the Holy Spirit. They're filled with the presence and power. And the church in Ephesus just blows up with amazing things. The whole uh, letter to the church in Ephesus that we're reading these passages out of comes out of Paul's encounter with these 12 people at Ephesus. And them being finally empowered. They, they were believers. It wasn't a question about their salvation. It was, did, did you get the power that comes with being a believer? And so they're filled. We need to be filled. And, it, and it's an ongoing filling, by the way. Just like your car. Right? Your car runs out of gas when you use it. The same as us. When we operate and we, we, we share the gospel and we, we seek to, to, to follow Jesus, we're, we're going to leak if we're not careful. And, and we need to continually be filled. Peter is filled at least four different times in the Bible with the Holy Spirit. It's not a one-off thing. It's that ongoing experience you have with God. Much like in a marriage, right? What if the only time your husband or wife ever told you that they were committed to you and they loved you was on your wedding day? And every time you say, well, honey, don't you love me? Well, don't you remember what I said <laughs> 43 years ago? Yeah. Or 40 years ago, Catherine and her husband are celebrating their 40th anniversary today. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I bet they've reminded each other about their commitment to one another and their love for one another more than just 40 years ago. And the same is true in our relationship with God. We, we get reminded and we get brought before him to be filled again and again. And if we've never been filled Get filled. Luke chapter 11, Jesus says, If you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, even more will God give the Holy Spirit to those who ask. That's a simple prayer. God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And then what we start seeing is this amazing, again, this tandem cooperating uh, experience that begins to happen. Again, it's a mystery to me why God entrusts us with this ministry, but he does. We are his plan A. The church of God is on earth is his plan A to reach those who don't know him yet. And he does that by the proclamation of the word and by the work of the Holy Spirit wielding that, that sword. Acts chapter 4. Just thought of one other verse. Acts, not everybody, don't, turn there if you have your Bible. Mark it down if you don't. Acts chapter 4, right? Um, John and Peter have been arrested. They've been talking about Jesus, right? And there's a couple powerful things there. It says, uh, in chapter 4, verse 20 of Acts, we cannot stop speaking about what we have seen and heard. Right? They're not just memorizing passages. They're, they're pulling on their experience that they've had with Jesus so far, and they can't stop talking about it. So much so that they've been put in prison. They'll, they'll be put in prison again. They'll be beaten for it. They'll count it an honor to be persecuted for Jesus. But they can't be quiet about what they've seen and heard. They experienced it in the relationship they have with Jesus. And then further down it says... They get together with the other disciples and they're in prayer. Verse 29. And now, Lord, take note of their threats against us and grant that your bondservants may speak your word with confidence while you extend your hand to heal and signs and wonders take place through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. That as we speak the word with confidence, as we yield to the truth, think of all the things we've talked about in the armor of God. The belt of truth, the breastplate of Righteousness, the, the shoes fitted with the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and now 
the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. All those things come into play. And as we speak those words with confidence, we're promised that the Spirit then acts in the same way and, and wields mightily against those things. Think about, again, what's our struggle against? Flesh and blood? No. No, it's against what? Principalities. Spiritual forces of wickedness and darkness in the heavenly places where the Spirit of God operates regularly. Yeah. <clears throat> and our part in that battle, our part in, in overcoming those things is speaking the Word of God. It's been an amazing journey with Jesus so far. I mean, I've, I've witnessed in my own life and in the life of others how the Word of God has helped heal people who are sick. I don't know why it doesn't always happen, but it does happen. The Word of God spoken over a situation or circumstance. I've seen marriages that, that in no earthly way should have survived, and they did. Because the Word of God got spoken over them, and they, they, they took to heart what Jesus was trying to do. Watching, I mean, literally almost watching the Spirit wage these spiritual battles on their behalf, but they had no idea what was happening. But watching relationships get reconciled. I've seen the Spirit uh, uh, bring uh, hope to people who have no reason. We pray for those people every Sunday when we pray for the persecuted church. Why in the world will they continue to follow Jesus? Right? I think of that so much. Well, it's only because they, they have to have the Holy Spirit in operation in their hearts to keep them connected, even amidst such suffering that they face in the world around us. I've seen, I've seen God restore friendships, finances, all when we dare to have confidence in yielding to what the truth of God's word has to say about those things in our lives. But it's not just for us. It's for the sake of all those people we were talking about a few minutes ago. Those people we know who are stuck in bondages and stuck in, in ruts and despair. People that are stuck hearing, hearing words of hate and provocation. And we get to speak hope and truth. In Revelation chapter 12, there's this, there's this dramatic image of the dragon being slain, Right? There's this dragon, and he's, he's described as the accuser of the brethren before God. He's the one that comes before God all the time and saying, Burn is not worth it, God. Why would you die for her? You should see her life. Or Jennifer, you can't, or Ed, you can't. And guess what? It says the dragon gets slain. Amen. Thank you. We need at least one amen on that one. <laughs> and then, then the word goes on to say, here's how he was defeated. By the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. That's right. Never underestimate the word of your testimony, your experience. Just like Peter and James who couldn't stop talking about what they had seen and heard. We are given such an amazing responsibility and a, an amazing uh, uh, task in this life and empowered to do so by the Holy Spirit to bring hope in the midst of hopelessness. Right. And if we're not there to speak it, who is? Nobody. That's right. The next time we find ourselves in a place where we feel like, oh, this is like day one, right? <laughs> Chaos, disoriented, hopeless, hopeless, formless, empty, let there be life. life. Amen. The word of God. So that, right. that brings up another part of that is that, that, that we have to be people who have practiced speaking the word of God to ourselves. Practice, start there. Yeah. Looking in the mirror, we've talked about this a lot over the, the year. Looking in the mirror and saying, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You, you are worth so much to God because he sent his son Jesus to die for you. What if he said that in the mirror every morning when he woke up? And then Jesus, give me eyes to see every person I meet today in that same way. That I refuse to believe that other people are my enemies. I believe they are your dear ones whom your son came to save and help me find a way to love them like you do. Just that attitude alone, by the way, isn't one that I generate on my own very quickly, but Jesus does. And Jesus says that now, as believers, his Holy Spirit lives in us and enables us to do that. The accuser of the brethren, it's an interesting word, isn't it? The enemy's tactic. Because right? if you think about so many things that happen in our world, not just our nation, but our world, and, and, and wars, and and unreconciled differences between husbands and wives and friends, so often it comes down to that. Someone has believed an accusation that isn't even true. Someone has misunderstood or misrepresented or we've assumed the worst about, and so we, we take up arms against a person and we make them our enemy instead of, uh, instead of loving them and saying, let there be light. It's a, it's a great prayer on any situation where you're seeking understanding. God, let there be light here. It's dark. I'm not understanding what's happening. 
And the promise is that God comes in power to bring restoration. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you first believed? Ask and receive him today. Receive him again today. Say, I need more. Be like the little, little uh, what, is, what is that? Uh, little orphan in one of Charles Dickens' stories. Oliver Twist. Oh. More, more, sir, right? <laughs> Except we come before God not as orphans, but as his children whom he dearly loves. Whom it says in scripture that he holds nothing back from us. He who gave us his own son, will he not now also freely give us all things? Romans 8. To trust God that much, to trust his word that much, to know him who is at work and, and at will in us to accomplish his good work. I have so many notes. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> there's a great, um, I'll, I'll end with this. There, there's, a, there's a movie called Signs. Anybody ever seen the movie Signs? Yeah. Yeah. And there's a character named Merrill in it. He's, he's got the distinguished notoriety in town of being the home run champion of the baseball team, but also the strikeout champion. Oh right? Mm -hmm. um, because he couldn't not swing. And a great line, he says, it just didn't seem right not to swing. <laughs> and I think some of us as Christians need to take up that kind of mentality when it comes to speaking the word of God to others. There's so many lies, and again, these are lies and accusations. You don't know the word well enough. You better not say that. Right. Or what if you bring something up that you don't have an answer to? Right. Or what if someone gets into some deep theological discussion and all of a sudden you're, you've given them the wrong word and you've just sent them to hell? You see how drastic and crazy that really is? <laughs> you're not asked to be in control of any of those things, right? And the, and the one you need to know isn't how many scriptures you've got memorized. It's, you know Jesus. Amen. You know Jesus. That's right. He's the word that we know. He's the word that we speak over. It, sometimes yeah. that's all you have to speak. Or if you wake up in the middle of the night with a nightmare or a night terror or a dread or, or whatever, sometimes just speaking the name of the word of God in flesh, Jesus into the darkness brings light and dispels and resists the enemy. He must flee, it says in the word, right? Resist the devil and he will flee. Flee. I love that. Flee. <laughs> he runs. The gates of hell cannot prevail against him. I know I've rambled a lot, but I trust God's word. <laughs> I trust God's word to, to sink in wherever it needs to this morning. But I, I do pray today as we as we continue to think about this. And next week we're going to kind of bring it to the crescendo that the, the whole purpose for the whole armor of God is for the purpose of prayer and to pray in the spirit always for all the believers and for one another that we get to do so in power and, 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 and in expectation that things happen when the church prays. So Father God, I thank you this morning for your word again. Thank you for Jesus. I thank you Lord that you've made yourself known to us and you've, you've, you've for once and for all proven your love for us in a person, in Jesus, in your son. I thank you too, Lord God, that you tell us in your word that when we trust in you and believe in you, that you send your Holy Spirit to live and dwell inside of us and that, that we can rely on him to bring to remembrance your word, to bring to remembrance the relationship we have with Jesus and Lord, to, to bring to, to our remembrance those, those scripture or those words that we need to speak over lives and over situations and over circumstances. Lord, I thank you for your truth, your righteousness, your salvation, your gospel of peace, your faith, your hope, your word this morning. That it may cut deep into our hearts, Lord, and stay there, and, and that we would have your word dwell in us richly, so that no matter what we do in word or deed, we do it all in your mighty name. Amen. Please stand with me as we sing our next song, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart.
God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father God, we do thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit and for reminding us once again that we are citizens of your kingdom. A kingdom that is, is now and not yet. A kingdom, Lord, that, that, that comes in glimpses and comes in fits and starts even sometimes. But it comes through the power of your Holy Spirit at work willing and working in each of your, your people, each, each part of the body of Christ in this world. Lord, we thank you for the persecuted church that reminds us, Lord God, that where your word goes forth, it will be opposed, that there is a battle, that there is a fight against others knowing about your good news and your love. And so we, we press in and we press on with our persecuted brothers and sisters, Lord God, for confidence and boldness and pray as the early disciples did, that as we speak with confidence, Lord God, that you extend your hand to do mighty things, that, that you wield the sword of the Spirit mightily. Father God, we thank you for this nation where you have placed us to be earthly citizens for a time and for a season, Lord God. And we pray that we would take the opportunity, opportunities and freedoms we have, Lord, to boldly declare your love to others, your peace, your joy, your hope, and to remind one another, Lord God, that we are pressing on toward a kingdom not of this world, Fill us again with your spirit as we just sang, Lord, to have a love for you and a love for others that goes far beyond our own human abilities and conquers all the, the schemes of the enemy that would seek to divide and destroy. Lord, we thank you for the season that we have come through and the election process. And we thank you, Lord, for your continued faithfulness to your church and your people here. And again, help us to be your uh, light in this country and our communities in our homes. Lord, thank you for the many partnerships in Christ that we have in this community in the Inland Northwest. Lord, we thank you for all the many ministries that, that seek to bring liberty and life and hope and love to others. We lift up to you today Luther Haven, Summit Christian Academy, Family Promise, Orchard Ridge, Champs Heart, Juvenile Justice Outreach, Food Banks, Union Gospel Mission, Safe Passage, Ecumenical Food Kitchen, Open Arms, Uganda Medical Mission, Voice of the Martyrs, Good Samaritan Rehab, Operation Christmas Child, and Lutheran Congregations and Mission for Christ. May we continue to lift them in prayer as, Lord, they are on the front lines in many places, being your hands and feet, your word going forth among others. And Father, thank you that we can come to your throne room again with confidence, knowing that we will receive your grace and mercy in our times of need. And we pray for comfort and encouragement for healing and hope for those we name before you now. We pray for Roxanne Helgeson, Steve Hagler, Nadia Bruno, Kit Carey, Joanne Carlson, Anna Daly, Mina Middlestad, Molly Schaffner, Ken Johnston, Dolores Johnston, Andy Dyson, Andy Brian Snyders, Karen Woods, and others we name either aloud or in our hearts. Lord, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. The peace of the Lord be with you. Turn and look a few people in the eyes and share the peace. Introduce yourself if you have Peace.
a cleansing stream. Remember now, my children, what you have seen. We share this food together, remembering Christ. We share a common treasure. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. A reminder and an invitation that this is the Lord's table. And so all who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior are welcome to come and partake. Uh, just some words of instruction as you, as you come forward. The ushers will kind of lead you this way. And then uh, there's the bread in the middle trays that you are to take from. And then cups on the, in the uh, cup trays. Uh, their wine is obvious and there's grape juice in the middle of each tray. The white juice is that. If you need gluten-free uh, bread, the little, the little plate in the front middle is just for you. So uh, please come. I'll let you know.
please stand. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you into life everlasting. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me as we sing our sending song, Holy Spirit, ever dwelling. serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.